This, this is Jackie with All Access, and I'm here with Dan and Alex of Chelsea Grin. How's it going? Uh, we go. I was just trying to get the sound effect going on there for you. And we are here at Warp Tour. It's the 20th anniversary of Warp Tour. Dare I ask what you were up to 20 years ago? I mean, I'm only 23, so I really have no idea what I was up to 20 years ago, to be completely honest. Uh, I was really like, like, transformer things, and uh, when I was three, I was probably playing with Batman, actually. I have a memory from when I was three. I lived in New Jersey, and I remember I had Batman and Robin, and I buried them both, and then I dug them up, but I couldn't find Robin. Uh, That's my first memory. There's a joke in there somewhere, but I can't find it. Jer Jersey, Jersey not only eats your soul, it eats your action figures. And Robin, which is and the most Robin. underrated superhero because of all Batman time. Batman was fine. Batman probably was just like, yeah, let's leave him down there. Everybody needs a wingman. That's all I'm saying. What was the first concert you ever went to? Mine wasn't that uh, epic, really. I mean, I, I thought it was cool, but it was like a local hardcore show. Yeah, it was literally the most terrified I've been in my entire life, but... I never really went to like concert concerts as a kid. There was always like underground stuff and like local shows and just local hardcore stuff in Salt Lake City. Uh, I think for, for me, I my mom took me to see this uh, event, this tour. It's called G3, and it's three G2? of the no G3. Uh -huh. And it's like uh, Steve Vai, uh, Joe Satriani, and Ingve Malmsteen, three like really really awesome guitar players. And I didn't really play guitar then at the time. But I saw that in 2003, and uh, it blew my mind, and then I started playing guitar. And now. Excellent. And now you're here at Warped. How do, you, um, how do you get the attention of kids as they're walking by? Is there a song that you want to make sure that they hear? Uh, honestly, that, that's kind of how we picked our set list, is uh, one of our more popular songs and also one of our heavier songs. Uh, is, is what we're playing first on this tour and we just like uh, it has a siren in the song and we literally just open with like a siren so like it just like creates this like feeling of like oh my god something's gonna fuck happen and then we start with like one of our heaviest songs and it literally just is the coolest way to start a set in my opinion because for example today people were moshing before we even started so that's the sign of it. getting ready for a good set I think that's a, that's a really good sign. That door fucking sucks. Yeah, but it goes to the stage. That's what microphones are for. I don't know. What happens if you are uh, playing and you look out and you see a bunch of cell phone screens? And I can't imagine that happening that much in your genre of music, but does that happen? We're in such autopilot mode when we play that things like that don't really happen all too often. Like... Uh, things, certain things stand out, like boobs, uh, but, or fights, but apart from that, like, we're just in the zone, in our own world. I don't know about you. I literally am not even seeing straight the whole time, really. Like, I'm literally almost like my eyes rolled in the back of my head or something. Like, I'm literally not focused on anything, unless it's like a big part, or I have like a big break, and I'm like telling the crowd to jump up and down then I kind of like focus too and I look around and I'm like okay they're all jumping cool they're into it let's keep going <laughs> well, there you go um, there's lots of uh, merch out outside at Warp Tour do you guys have any interesting or unique merch or have seen something pretty creative we have a really cool shirt with Miley Cyrus's face on it and she has a Chelsea grin it's pretty tight Check that one out. That sounds really Probably good. Should. Sounds really good. Um, Facebook uh, used to be the way after MySpace that bands would spread the word, but it's getting kind of expensive. Um, how do you prefer to spread the word about your band? Honestly, I mean, I think that Facebook, like, for, for example, like, we have, like, a million-plus likes on our Facebook page, and the fact that we can't post to everyone that likes us, I think, is really really like ridiculous and just you know like I mean it's obviously just a big scheme to make money I mean god forbid Facebook needs thousands and thousands more dollars but I mean MySpace was a perfect example of how music was easy because when I was a kid like I'd literally go to my favorite band and 
I'd go to their top eight and I'd check out all their friends' bands and then I'd go to their top eight and it was just so much more of like an open way to find new music rather than, you know, just Facebook being writing posts and dumb shit like that, I guess. Fair enough. I, damn evolution. Damn technology. With <laughs> money, yeah. With record sales sort of on the decline across the board, uh, you know, album sales used to be how bans knew they made it or they yeah. made, or made money for that matter. How do you sort of gauge success? Uh, a huge thing uh, for, for us and a lot of other bands that are like neck and neck with us, it's, uh, and I'm probably all bands, uh, the first week sales, uh, which is the total number of sales of pre-order sales and uh, digital uh, in-store purchases in the first week only. And uh, that number is uh, like crucial to which tours you're going to be offered. Uh, like people really gauge the size of a band off of what their latest first week sales were. Um, so that is why uh, we sincerely uh, ask you to buy our CD. <laughs> Comes out July 8th and it's called Ashes to Ashes and I will seriously be so happy if you buy it. We just want to get good tours, and yeah. that's how you do it, really. So, Ashes to Ashes, it comes out on July 8th, okay? Which is this upcoming Tuesday, I believe. Yes. New Music Tuesday. Um, you mentioned pre-orders. Are, are there some sort of pre-order bundles that will entice fans? What, what sort of things are you offering? Uh, right now, we have, like, a bunch of pre-order packages on MerchNow.com. And, uh, you know, we have everything from, you know, just the CD to sh CDs and certain shirts that are never going to be printed again. We have uh, uh, certain, uh, like, prints of the album artwork, which our tattoo artist designed himself that won't ever be in print again. And, you know, we've got vinyl and stuff like that. So, like, yeah, that is the merch now is where to find all the special edition stuff. So it sounds like you have a lot of things to offer to entice fans to pre-order Ashes to Ashes. What's up next for Chelsea Green After Warp Tour? Not to mention our handsome faces. Well, that too. Yeah. After Warped, we're doing this really awesome tour in the fall. And uh, unfortunately, I'm not allowed to talk about it yet. But uh, recently, I'll give you a tease. Recently, uh, we haven't been doing like a lot of super metal tours and like super death metal tours. And... Uh, this is the one, and uh, it's a few bands that I feel like, I mean, uh, our, our fans have always wanted us to tour with, and hopefully vice versa, and it's literally just going to be a Metal Kid's wet dream, so. A Metal Kid's wet dream. Make sure you pick up Ashes to Ashes this coming Tuesday. Stay tuned for more from Chelsea Grin. This is Jackie with All Access and In the Key of Change.